click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design one. We are right now learning about the design of shafts, various shafts. In the last session we have seen or last two sessions we have seen the design of power transmission shafts. In current session we are going to look at the formula and design aspects which are associated with hollow shafts. There is a slight difference between hollow shaft and solid shaft and that we need to understand properly. Let's look at it properly. So on your screen you can see there are two shafts shown. Of course this becomes your solid and this becomes the hollow shaft. Hollow shaft has got a hole inside it. If I draw the stress distribution there are two means. First is torsional shear stress and second mean is your bending stress. When the loads do act in transverse manner they lead to the bending stresses and when the torque acts about the axis that leads to the shear stress. Now when the torque is acting like this shear stress distribution is like this. Now you can see this properly that the maximum amount of shear stress is on the outer side of the shaft. You can see the outer side of the shaft. As we tend to the center of the shaft, the value of stress becomes almost negligible. The same thing happens when it comes to bending stresses. The maximum bending stresses do act on the extremities of the given diameter of the shaft. Whereas at the center that almost becomes zero. The next thing of course this is the neutral axis I am talking about. When it comes to hollow shaft is the same thing the maximum shear stress acts at the outermost side but the innermost side there is no presence of shear stress. The same thing happens about the bending stresses. The maximum stresses are again at the outermost side and the innermost side has no stresses at all. So how the hollow shaft is going to be useful for us. The very first point like we have said the bending stress and the shear stresses are nominal at the center but excellent at the extreme fibers. So your extreme fibers have got the capacity or they should have the capacity to resist these stresses. The outer layers are more effective for strength that is what the conclusion is. Now if you see properly the more mass is away from the center as far as the hollow shaft is concerned. More the mass away from the center helps it to sustain the stresses properly and that's why the hollow shafts are preferred over the solid shafts because the more material is shifted towards their extremities away from the center. That is the first point we should understand. The next thing is advantages and disadvantages. Of course this is this has got no direct connection with the design part but using this only designs are made for the hollow shafts. The very first thing the advantages they are more stiffness at the same weight. If I compare two shafts one is solid and another is hollow they are of the same weight so the material consumption is same. In that case the stiffness that the hollow shaft has is more always more than the solid shaft. The second thing is the strength. The strength can be your bending stress, it can be your tensile stress or it can be your shear stress. The strength in all these manners is more in case of the given hollow shaft as compared to the solid shaft at the same weight. The next thing is the higher natural frequency. Now most of the shafts which are the moving part they are dynamic part and whenever dynamic part comes into picture there has to be vibration in consideration. So when hollow shaft comes into picture it has got great dynamic vibration capacity or absorbing vibration capacity as compared to the solid shaft and hence they are better in vibrations also. Whereas they have got two important disadvantages. The first one is the costlier. Of course we need to drill out the hollow shaft of course its outer area is also more and that's why it becomes costlier both as far as the material is concerned and as far as the production cost is concerned. Whereas it occupies more space at the same weight if I compare again a solid and a hollow shaft of course the diameter outer diameter of hollow shaft will be greater than the solid shaft. In that case for the same machine part it will occupy more space that makes the machine bulky. Apart from that there is no disadvantage as such and that's why they becomes preferred ones as compared to solid shafts. And let us move to the design aspects of hollow shafts. When it comes to the design of hollow shaft it is generally considered that outer and inner diameters are supposed to be designed and that's why 
OD and IOD are supposed to be considered or designed and the design is based on strength as well as the rigidity at the same time or in combination with each other. The second thing is the failure. Now like solid shafts design of the hollow shaft is also considering the following failures. The very first is axial tensile stress. If there are some axial loads or loads acting in the direction of axis in that case tensile stresses will arise and we should consider their factor. The next thing comes out to be bending stresses. If the transverse loads are acting or if there are some mountings on the hollow shaft we need to consider the bending stresses also. Torsional shear stress. Of course shafts are designed or shafts are used to transmit the power. That's why the torsional moment will be in picture and hence the shear stress we need to consider. And the last thing is combination of all of them. Now generally the shafts are used for the heavy transmission and that's why all of them can arise at the same time and we need to consider the combination in order to design these particular shafts. The next thing is the formula associated with hollow shaft design. Very first strength like we have discussed it in two parts a strength wise or the rigidity wise. The strength wise when we go there is there are two aspects again. Combination of axial bending and shear stresses at the same time in that case the axial stress is actually equal to the bending stress as well as the torsional stress. Let us say the value is sigma x. The second is combination of bending and shear stress only. In that case the axial stress becomes your bending stress and let us say sigma x. In that case there is a constant that's called C and which is nothing but the ratio of the outer diameter with the inner diameter. So inner diameter divided by outer diameter is nothing but C. It's a constant. Of course this particular value of diameter is going to be smaller than 1 because outer diameter is always greater than inner diameter. Next thing is sigma t has got this particular formula. We know that sigma t is nothing but the tensile stress and that is nothing but force divided by area of cross section. Now since this is a hollow shaft area of cross section will be outer area of circle minus inner area of the circle. When the formula was modified slightly using this particular ratio we obtain this particular empirical relation. When it comes to sigma bending we already know some bending equations based on which we have found out this equation where again this particular thing represents the relationship between the outer diameter and inner diameter. The same thing can be done for the shear stress. Now shear stress is based on the torsional this thing stiffness and that is nothing but this particular formula using torsional equations. Here also they represents the ratio between them. So in short we are going to design the given hollow shaft only for inner and outer diameter which is expressed in terms of the constant C. Now the next thing is the failure theory used in strength. We are still in the part of strength. So failure theories used are either maximum principal stress or maximum shear stress. They can be used at the same time or they can be used separately. Where maximum principal stress has got very simple straightforward formula axial or the total stress divided by 2 plus this particular expression. If we substitute their respective values which we have seen in the previous slide we'll get or we'll get the derived one form word formula is this where the these values will be known the only unknown will be outer diameter and we can find out it in terms of the inner diameter. The condition for this particular stress that this is the maximum principal stress should not extend the allowable value of stress that is nothing but the yield strength divided by factor of safety. Now this expression is basically for the ductile materials. When it comes to maximum shear stress theory, this is the expression we have. Again if we substitute the values, respective values, we will get this particular formula or expression or empirical relation. Here also the condition is the maximum allowable stress or shear stress should not exceed this particular expression. The second part of the strength of the consideration is the torsional rigidity. We know that this is the equation or bending moment equation we have where theta is in radian. After converting theta in terms of degree we get this particular relation which after conversion at the end becomes theta in degree is equal to this particular empirical relation where this is nothing but the torsional moment, this is the length of the shaft, this is the constant of rigidity, the outer diameter and the constant that is the ratio between the inner diameter with the outer diameter. So whenever we have to design based on the given conditions we have to design the shaft using either strength or using either rigidity. 
at the same time or differently. Of course, this will be illustrated in the example which we are going to solve soon. So, friends, there we end with the formula and design aspects of the hollow shaft. In the next session, we will be looking at the numerical based on design of hollow shaft. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.